In this video, I'll be walking through the strategies and techniques I use for my drawing, as well as showing you a bit of a behind the scenes of the type of material I like to use. So I'll start from the very beginning. One of my favourite and trustiest materials which I bring everywhere with me is this really, really old clipboard. I've had it since I was in high school and I've got a poem by Kipling at the back to give me a bit of inspiration if I feel down. So I like to bring it with me anywhere I go because it just provides a stable surface to work off and it also prevents things from getting stained. I don't really mind if the clipboard gets a bit battered but I do mind if I'm damaging other people's property which is why also I've got this cardboard paper backing just to make sure this table really does not get stained underneath. And I've got a sheaf of paper that's ready to go. And the next most important thing that I bring around with me are my pens in this tiny pencil case here. And I'll bring them out and show you the different types of pens that I use. So first of all is this mechanical pencil. And it's just really great. I don't have to I don't have to sharpen it at all. And I like to use 4B lead because it's soft, it's easy to erase and can be smudged a little bit. It's just really pleasant to draw with. It's like drawing with butter in a way. And along with my pencil comes my very old eraser. And then I'll start off with my pens from the smallest to the largest. So I'm a really big fan of Copic markers. And this is the smallest one that I could find, which is 0.03 millimetres. So it's a very fine line. And I'll just show you how tiny it is. So this is the pen here. If I do a dot, it's pretty imperceptible. And if I do a line, it could almost be like a hair, depending on how fast I draw it. And I've got quite a few Copic markers all the way up to 0 0.3 and by contrast this is how it goes. So a bit more of a bolder line. These Copic markers are fine tip pens and sometimes when I want to be a little bit more bolder and aggressive with my drawing I use Muji because that's ballpoint and Muji is actually 0 0.38 millimeters and this is how it goes just a much more bolder line. And another pen I like to use is this, um, I'll just move this paper, is this graphic marker. And the reason I like to use that is that because it behaves a little bit differently on paper than the Copic markers. On this usual printing paper that I've got here, the graphic marker is the same and it is quite fine, it's 0 0.05. But when it goes on paper with heavy clay surfaces that are a little bit easier to erase, it's just so strong and it stays put. So that will be the graphic. And I'll show you the Copic. And I'll just show you, besides this Copic scribble here, a bit of graphic scribble. So you can really tell the difference. And I'll let that dry for around 10 seconds or so. Because these pens can smear a bit when they're on clay paper, so I'll make sure they're ultra dry. And then once I erase them, and you can see this Copic marker leaves this grey outline, but the graphic stays the same. So that can be quite useful when trying to leave different types of grey on the paper, which we'll get to later on. And then my favourite drawing pen that I like to use is actually any sort of permanent marker or Sharpie or anything that's really fat and leaves a really bold line. Because as you'll see later on, they're really good for colouring in. So that's a summary of the material that I use. But now I'd like to show you in practice how 
these simple pens can be used to make really luscious drawings. As you've seen in the last video, the range of material you find at the markets and in nature are quite sophisticated and difficult to capture on paper when you've got things like, such as shapes and colours and lights. How do you define that all with just simple black and white? Well, the secret is you can just use a lot of patterns and I'll show you them right now. So thinking about something nice and 3D like this yam bean, I like to use a technique called pontillism or dot work. And an example of a previous artwork of mine is this one here. As you can see, this ice cream cone is made nuanced by the dots in the middle. I put more dots when there's shadow and put less dots when it's a little bit lighter. So this is the first technique that I like to use. Another technique that I like to use when I'm trying to really demonstrate shape in something is something called line work, or I call it line work. I'm not very good at it, but it is something that's interesting to try and use. And here's, here's an example of where I've used line work in the past. This is um, my boyfriend's dog looking at his favorite thing, which is my boyfriend's dad. And as you, as you can see, the lines have been used to suggest the shape and the nuance. And line work is actually quite common. It's just not seen by most people. But if you have a look at our usual money notes, then this is the form of technique that's used to suggest shape on people's portraits. As you can see in this portrait of Queen Elizabeth, this fine detail of lines and sometimes dots, but in uniform lines has been used to suggest the curves of her face and her, the shine of her eyes and even her hair. Not only are the individual strands highlighted, but you can see where the shadows lie and where the curls are. So line work when used sophisticatedly is quite a powerful way to demonstrate shape and colour, as well as light. Just switch this under. And the third technique that I like to use, and probably my favorite technique to use, is just negative space, is trying to find the balance between complete black and complete white. And this technique is really good when it comes to drawing things with fine details such as leaves or overlapping objects because you just leave a fine white line in between anything that is close together. And an example of this is here with this turtle that I drew at a long time ago. As you can see, the negative space is used to show the difference between the parts of this turtle shell. And I suppose I've used a little bit of line work to suggest the vegetation around him as well as his body. Negative space has also been used in this drawing of a magpie that I've done. And in this, in this drawing here in particular, I've used negative space by leaving out the outline between the um, white parts on the magpie's head as well as its tail and just the background. As you can see, the eye already fills in those spaces. You don't need to have an outline there. The negative space just speaks for itself. And there's a fine white line here that delineates this magpie and shows that it's in front of the tulip behind it. So this is the third type, which is... What I really love about ink illustration is just how bold and vibrant the final output is. Even though the techniques are so simple, just with a few dots in dot work or a few lines with line work or the clever use of negative space, 
can be exceptionally powerful in showing complicated features of the world around us, such as my favourite subject matter, tropical edible produce. And when it comes to capturing complicated subject matter, not only have we got these powerful tools and techniques at our disposal, we've also got our eyes and our ability to manipulate the space around us. We're able to see how the light hits the plants. We're able to move things to make sure that they're in a beautiful patterned way. And that to me really forms the basis of what I call lighting and composition. And that's what I'll talk about in the next video.